recognizes Mr. Marsh, Ranking Member Marshall for five minutes. Yeah, thank you so much. I'll keep with Mr. Gomez for a second. I want to continue to talk about this alternative process of evaluating candidates. Did you feel that what they did do in these two uh, instances was as rigorous as the prescribed handbook procedure? Well, sir, so we didn't have an opportunity because we didn't get any data on what EPA did. So EPA just told us that they had briefings with senior management uh, where they discussed the advantages and disadvantages or plus and minuses <coughs> of candidates. But for all the other committees that reviewed, you know, we had those grids, those, those documents. We were able to see these, this is how the committee uh, nominated folks and this is who they viewed was most qualified. For EPA, we weren't able to see that, so we weren't able to make that assessment. In those two, but then in the other 20 committees, from a broad holistic perspective, did you think the EPA was doing a satisfactory, satisfactory job in their advisory board appointments? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, maybe go back to everybody that left uh, the witnesses. Do you feel there's any two committees that uh, EPA could eliminate, Dr. Samet? I would actually probably defer to my colleague, uh, Dr. Burke, who has a broad perspective on the uh, various committees. I mean, uh, given the f broad breadth of EPA science and multidisciplinarity, I suspect that there's a rather lean set of committees, but I would defer to Dr. Burke on this. Sure. Sorry. Sorry. There are, I think, 18, 18, and 22 committees uh, at, at EPA, and, and they represent a tremendous amount of, of different interests. For instance, there's a committee on environmental justice. There's a drinking... I'm, I'm sorry. It's kind of a yes or no. Do you think there's something that could be eliminated? I, I would think that, as has been mandated by the executive order, to carefully study and understand the criteria uh, would be necessary before saying they should be eliminated. So, But I, they could be absorbed or combined or something like that? I, I, I would uh, really defer to the process on that, I can't say. I found them to be tremendously influential and important, and particularly important to the business community as and a there, way. And there is a process that if they're all, if they're declared essential, we can bypass that. I'll go back to Mr. Gomez. Looking at your charts on uh, just the proportion of academic members in a committee, uh, uh, your SAB report, 22 academic members, and there's five industry members. About an eighth of it is industry. W what is an ideal ratio of academic to non-academic, and how do, you, how do you get there? Again, that's, that's a good question, and I think that that's driven, as I mentioned earlier, by the, the charter of the committee and whatever the needs are of EPA. Uh, to make those determinations. Again, we were not looking at what's the proper composition. Uh, that wasn't our focus. Our, pro our focus, again, was a process audit to look at what's the process, did EPA follow the process, and if not, you know, what is it they can do to improve it? Yeah. I mean, I, I kind of look at things through healthcare since I'm a physician, and I, I think of recommendations for pap smears and mammograms and the academic folks telling us, you know, you don't need a pap smear every three years. Young men, women don't need mammograms. But I was the person down there with the experience trying to tell a woman why she didn't need that pap smear or didn't need a mammogram. And, and, and really, I thought it was in her best interest to get it. And I really think that there's a great place for people from industry and non-academics. And I guess I would almost take exception that people on the committees are the best in the and the highest qualified, with my experience in medicine, is the, the, the brightest, the greatest, were so busy, so popular, had such a long waiting list, they didn't have time to do some of these uh, committees. So I think it's a different pool of people that are even available to have the time and really think that we should keep uh, really emphasizing non-academic members on some of these committees. So uh, with that, I'll, I'll yield back the remainder of my time.